I mean, someone has to pay for NARS never ending lawsuits for violating antitrust laws. <laughs> hey, Jerry, you a savage. You are a savage, Jerry, man. I rock with you, man. <laughs> What's going on, guys? It's your man, Ed Hayes, the Wholesale Coach here, back for another video. And in this one, I'm going to be reacting to Jerry Norton's recent video saying that here's a four reasons why wholesalers need to stop assigning property. So I haven't actually checked it out myself. So we're going to be doing a live reaction to the video today. And, you know, some people have reached out to me, asked me to make a video on it and whatnot. And it seems like it's been getting a lot of views. So I just wanted to give my opinion and perspective on that particular topic about doing assignment deals. So guys, man, I hope that y'all pump for this content. But look, before we dive into the video, guys, I got to do the YouTube stuff. I got a goal that I'm trying to hit right now. I'm trying to get the 12,500 subscribers before the end of this year, guys. I know it's a big goal. It's a crazy goal, but it's my goal. And the only way I'm going to hit that goal is if you all give me the HBO special. What's the HBO special? That's the help a brother out special. Hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more content. I'm going to give you a moment to do that. All right, now let's get into this content. Uh, with me, that's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? That's a bet, right? That's a bet, right? That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? That's a bet, right? That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? That's a bet, right? That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? Hey, coming down like precipitation. I ain't never met a. The first big reason to stop doing assignments is because more and more title companies are discontinuing to do assignment transactions. I experienced this firsthand last year on a wholesale deal that I did in Maryland. On the day of closing, at the last minute, the title company came back and said they would not perform the closing because what? the underwriter insuring title did not want the liability of my assignment transaction. It was a fiasco. I had to find another title company and I ended up double closing and I got my deal done. Now, after that happened, I wanted to know if that was just an isolated incident, so I called my title agent in Arizona, who I do a lot of transactions with, and she said it's becoming more and more difficult to close assignments, and the overall sentiment is that an assignment creates a disclosure issue with sellers and is becoming too risky to insure. Proper disclosure is one of the biggest complaints against wholesalers, so I highly recommend you use my flipping disclosure addendum on all of your transactions with sellers. So I just want to address that point that he just made right there about, you know, making sure that you're actually disclosing stuff. And I tell wholesalers all the time, like you can't just be out here all willy nilly, literally lying to people from day one. That's not OK. And anybody that's teaching you that it's OK, you should probably look at how they're treating you. Isn't that cute? But it's wrong! Just seriously, like whether it's disclosing that you're an agent when when if you're an agent, if you're actually an agent, you got to disclose to sellers that you're an agent. Like even if you're not an agent, make sure that you disclose to the seller like, hey, you know, I may be making some profit on this deal. Is that all right with you? Because I would hate for you to be flipping out on me at the title company. Things like that, like make sure that you're actually disclosing things because you would hate the like title claim type of situation happening or whatever, where someone comes back afterwards like, hey, no, I think I have a claim to, to for some extra money because you may profit off of my property. Make sure that you're overly disclosing, guys. That's the key. That's the key for real. The second big reason to stop doing assignments is because of legal ramifications. Ohio recognizes the assignment as a legal instrument, but does not approve of the practice or business of doing assignments. In other words, a random assignment here and there, not an issue because it's not your primary form of transacting real estate. But once you repeatedly and intentionally enter into contracts without the means or ability to close on those contracts, now the Ohio Real Estate Division has an issue. It's kind of yeah, guys, that's very, very similar to the situation out in Chicago as well, where basically in Illinois, if you're a licensed agent, you can do more than one um, wholesale deal. Basically, you can be in the business of doing like assignment or wholesale type transactions. So I guess that's very similar to Ohio, where, yeah, you can assign things, but they don't want you in the business of actually being a wholesaler. So like buying and selling cars, 
Do it once in a while and no one has an issue. But once you do it more than six times, now it's considered a business practice and you need a dealer license. Assignments are viewed very much the same way. More and more real estate governing agencies are mandating that wholesalers obtain a real estate license and adhere to the same oversight as real estate agents. In the state of Illinois, you're only allowed to do one transaction before they consider it a practice or a business, and then you must get licensed. Oklahoma recently took the position that if you publicly market a contract for sale, AKA an assignment, you're acting no different than an agent and must be licensed. Now, my personal opinion is that you should get licensed, not because you're mandated to, but because of the benefits to you. Wow, just for real, real quick, like I didn't actually know that that happened in Oklahoma. I'll probably likely be making a video about that as well soon. The third big reason, and for me, the scariest and perhaps the biggest reason to stop doing assignments is the consumer protection agencies are really coming down hard on wholesalers who use assignments and it's ugly. These anti-wholesaler groups are not just accusing wholesalers of being misleading to homeowners by not properly disclosing their intentions, but that wholesalers are actually predatory and the public needs protected from them. The argument is that wholesalers lie to sellers Why the fuck you lying? by fraudulently claiming to be buyers when they are in fact not, and that wholesalers harm sellers because they back out of contracts when they can't find a real buyer to assign their contract to. These anti-wholesaler advocates claim that wholesalers steal equity and should be regulated at best and preferably banned altogether. What? Ooh. Hey, look, and th these are the possibilities of what can happen when wholesalers are going out there lying. Like I've stated in a ton of my videos, guys, since 2018, if you're out here misrepresenting yourself, literally lying to people that's fraud and so like they have like you know a lot of advocates trying to help people not get frauded out there seriously because you can't just say hey i'm the buyer and you don't have no money and you have no relationships with investors and stuff like that or whatever whatever it is like you have to be honest use disclosure be real out here but jerry's right man we got a, we got a lot of things against us right now man the assignments may not be the best wave right now for real stop it get some help the fourth big reason to stop doing assignments is wholesalers are a target for the national association of realtors or nar now, as one of the biggest and most powerful organizations in America, NAR either leads or strongly supports all of the previously stated arguments against wholesalers doing assignments. Now, NAR's position is wholesalers act no differently than agents and should be licensed and regulated. Now, of course, from NAR's perspective, that would eliminate competition and wholesaler income would now go through the broker model, bringing it under NAR's umbrella. I mean, someone has to pay for NAR's never ending lawsuits for violating antitrust laws. <laughs> hey, Jerry, you a savage. You are a savage, Jerry, man. I rock with you, man. <laughs> you stay going in on the realtors, though, man. I don't blame you neither. I swear I don't, man. That's too funny. To <laughs> Why not wholesalers? But that's beside the point. Stop doing assignments and NAR doesn't have a leg to stand on. So given these four big reasons, I have strategically decided to move away from assignments as a business practice and I recommend you do the same. Instead, I prefer and recommend three alternative strategies. You can do it. All right, let me see if I can guess what they are. I'm gonna say <clears throat> transactional funding, um, I would say probably becoming an agent. Let's see, and uh, maybe doing some creative finance deals instead of actually just trying to wholesale it, maybe you grab it for yourself. Let's see what Jerry has to say. Alternative method number one is to just double close the transaction. A double closing is when you enter into a contract with a seller, same as you normally do. Now, if you don't have the funds for doing double closings, don't worry, I'll help you out. I'll give you 100% of the money. To learn how to use my money to fund your double closings, go to usejerryscash.com to register for a free training to get all the details. Guys, drop me a comment down below if you'd like for me to actually check out, check it out, check out Jerry Norton's uh, uh, lending situation and see like what it's looking like. I have had a few people already reach out to me. 
But if you're checking out this video and you'd like for me to find out more about his funding system, definitely drop me a comment down below. Alternative method number two is similar to buying and reselling, but instead of finding the cash buyer ahead of closing and doing a back-to-back -back double closing, instead you intentionally wait to find the buyer until after you purchase the property. Instead, close on the purchase and then list the property for sale on market. By you know, I've got um, a few different people that I know of that do very similar things. They basically call this whole telling. So like they'll get the property for like a reasonable price or whatever. And then they'll put like, you know, a little bit of work into it, five, $10,000 into it, like something that you can literally put on a credit card or whatever, just clean the place up, make it look a little bit better. Maybe just clean the place out, just get all of the seller stuff out of there, things like that. And then literally put it right back on the market for significantly more. I think people like Brian Arigbu are doing Oh, excuse me, Brian Arigbu, Max Maxwell, Brandon Barnes. Um, I got a couple buyers out in uh, Chicago who do very similar things. So it's a great model right there. The wholesaling model um, can be a great way for people who can get go out there and get some hard money. So maybe you have 10% of the purchase plus rehab that you can actually pay out of pocket. And then like you'll just be borrowing the money for a little bit of time. So you don't really have to worry about interest. You could potentially get it whole tail in about 30 to 45 days. Sounds like a good idea. By listing a property for sale on market, your property will get maximum exposure because a lot more people are gonna see your home for sale. Many flippers call this technique wholetailing. It implies you're wholesaling to a retail buyer, thus wholetailing. In some cases, I may even do some minor improvements such as doing a trash out or cleaning it and then taking really good pictures. For example, I did a video where I showed how I bought a property where you could barely see the house from all of the overgrown bushes. All I did was spend a few hundred dollars, I cut down all the overgrowth, and then the house looked night and day different. I took new pictures and then relisted it and quickly sold it for a big profit. And the third alternative method is to just do a good old fashioned fix and flip. Now, while not for everyone, I think every wholesaler should learn how to fix and flip. You don't ever want to be a one trick pony in this business. Some of my biggest profit deals are fix and flips, and sometimes it makes way more sense to keep it, rehab it, and flip it for top price to a retail buyer. All wholesalers everywhere need to become more aware of their state laws, as well as these concerns that are out there with the regulatory boards and the consumer protection agencies. And above all else, as an industry, we need to operate at a higher level. The best way to do that, I believe, is to organize as an industry and create standardized training and best practices. All right, guys. So I think I'm going to wrap it up there. I think he's probably going to pitch to the wholesaler association that he's trying to get started up right now. But guys, just to kind of like recap what, what, what Jerry was talking about up in this video, like, yeah, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's man, it's crazy out here. Honestly, there there's a lot of negative stigma when it comes to being a wholesaler now. There's a lot of um people don't see us as good people let's just put it like that like people really think that we're scam artists y'all hear me talk about all the time like look integrity honesty is important we can't be going out here just saying one thing and doing another we don't want to tell miss johnson hey we're gonna buy the property but we're literally just lying come on don't bullshit me bullshit bullshit <laughs> bullshit Bullshit. Bullshit. We have to hold ourselves to a higher standard. I totally agree with that. Now, when it comes to should you keep assigning properties or not? I mean, I think for a lot of people, like basically the methods that he was talking about up in this video, which are use transactional funding, um, you know, do an actual fix and flip or actually purchase the property in that scenario that would be like a hard money scenario or just cash actually purchase the property and then wholesale the property so all three of those methods honestly are going to cost money for the average person transactional you may be able to get away with the transactional you may actually be able to pull off a transactional deal with no dollars out of pocket up front if i'm not mistaken i could be wrong but either way um i think that for some people it's going to be kind of cost prohibitive so you may have to keep assigning, but just know that Jerry is 1 million percent correct when he says that, you know, <clears throat> over time, there's going to be more stigma. There's going to be more negativity surrounding wholesaling. It hasn't stopped since I've gotten to the game. It's just become more and more prevalent. 
And so it's different places all across the nation that are implementing little minor regulations and things like that to stop us. Another thing that I mentioned earlier, like you may want to become an agent as well. That's another way to potentially protect yourself when the new regulations do come into the pipeline. So like for me in Chicago, if I was already a licensed real estate agent, when they made the new law out there, it wouldn't have slowed down anything for me. So Guys, man, <clears throat> anyway, though, man, hey, look, I think some of y'all are obviously still going to have to assign some deals. Um, hopefully over time, all of us will be able to transition away from, you know, just assigning off deals because it does look sketchy to title companies and agents, attorneys. People do ask a lot of questions, man, and it makes you feel like you have less intent. All right, man, look, my camera died on me. <laughs> I ran out of space on my computer. Obviously, it's time for me to wrap this video up, man. I hope that y'all staying healthy and staying blessed out there as always. Binge watch these videos, guys. Look, I got over 250 videos on the channel, man. Also, make sure before y'all get up out of here, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel, man. I hope that y'all appreciate it. Give me the HBO special before y'all get up out of here, man. Push the button. Push the goddamn button! Push the goddamn button! You heard what she said. Anyway, though, guys, I'm not gonna hold y'all up. Hope y'all staying healthy, staying blessed. And until next time, guys, we are out.